I'm attaching a piece of timber underneath the piece that spans across the room. This is to create the counterlever for extending the bench up to the edge of the chemical table. With the main support being secured in place, I finish off the edges next to the chemical table. You come and go like a monsoon rain. You had a show like a lightning bolt. You have it all. Last week we completed stage one of this structure which was to get all the primary framing in. We poured a reinforced concrete slab about 75 mil thick. The original function for this space was gonna be a storage shed with custom shelves all built on the inside. But now it's also gonna be doubling up as a dark room because my customer is a professional photographer. So she thought there'd be enough space in here to set up a small dark room area. And the whole structure is gonna be sheeted with marine ply from the inside. So we'll have rough exposed frames on the outside to give us our Japanese architectural theme. This was kind of a wasted dead space. My client wanted this shed to have a Japanese feel about it. So I constructed it with an exterior frame and added marine ply panels. Let's take a look on the inside. With our outside walls complete, on this episode we'll be focusing on the interior. We'll build out the door frame in preparation for the custom door that comes later and construct the bench that facilitates the photographic equipment. It also serves as a purpose to store tubs underneath. There's a few other elements we'll be finishing off, like some skirting boards and the ceiling. The ceiling has insulation and is sheeted with a marine ply skin. I'll also be installing some electrical conduit in preparation for the electrician to run wiring for the lighting and exhaust fan. So join me as I show you the process of creating this custom built shared darkroom under a pre-existing steel awning. For the insulation in our ceiling, we're gonna be using polystyrene foam blocks and silver backed paper as a membrane. A tin roof like this can get really hot in summer and also cold in winter. So this insulation will make this room much more functional. The reason I'm using polystyrene battens is a tin roof like this will create condensation. Soft insulation can absorb this condensation and you can end up with mold issues. I use a combination of the foil paper and silver tape to hold the styrene battens in place. I get a sheet of the foil paper started on the far edge. This will support the first batch of battens and then we'll be able to tape back onto the secured area. I'm cutting the first batten slightly too large. This way I can wedge it in place and it can become a secure point to tape the other pieces of batten to. My plan is to fill out one void at a time using the existing steel rafters as an anchor point to connect my silver tape to. When the ceiling voids completely filled with battens, I fold the silver paper up over the steel rafter to secure it and then move on to the next void. styrene is with a score and snap method. I use my set square as a guide so I can make square cuts. Cut one side of the foam batten, then turn it over and transfer that cut with little notches, and then cut it again using the square as a guide. It should just snap along the line after that, and then I install it in place. For cutting the foil paper, I have a scrap of plywood laid out on the concrete. This helps me get a square cut. It also stops my blade getting blunt. Having a section of ceiling completely secured makes it easy to tape the next piece of foil paper and wrap it over the rafter. We just keep repeating the process till we get to the end of the ceiling. As a young girl, it feels were mine. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore 
up, they fall and free Without a care in the world I was one rich little girl this corner open we'll be installing an exhaust fan later to help with the fumes from the darkroom chemicals as part of our system for waterproofing and to stop light leaking in I'm adding a bead of Sikaflex around the top of our plywood panels where it meets the steel rafters you can use silicon for this process but I prefer using polyurethane it's more expensive than silicon, but it sticks and bonds much better and lasts a lot longer. This completes the inside seal. I'll be adding another bead of polyurethane on the outside after we've added a waterproof oil to the treated timber. I'm adding a skirting board where the marine ply meets the concrete. Our panels are only six millimeters thick. This will add a lot of strength to the bottom edge of our walls. It's always safest to cut the longest piece first. That way, if you make a mistake, you can reuse this piece for one of the smaller sections. soffit area above the doorway. I need to frame it out with the same treated timber we built the frames for all the other walls. Later on I'll be adding plywood to cover the opening. It's also going to allow the exhaust system to vent air outside the room without rain getting into the system. I'm starting with the largest piece first, which will be a continuation of the main header beam we installed in the previous episode. It'll need a notch cut out of it so it can fit around the existing steel rafter. I'm using a different process to achieve this this time. Instead of doing multiple slices with my circular saw, I've drilled some holes and I'm using my jigsaw and the circular saw together to cut the notch out. I then smooth out the sharp edges with my orbital sander. I test fit it in place and take a look at how I want to attach it to the pre-existing steel awning. It has a pretty snug fit and matches the main beam well. I've decided the best way to attach it securely would be to anchor it into the steel rafter. This involves me drilling a bunch of pilot holes and fixing the screws through the back of the steel into the timber. of the 2x4s we manufactured for our walls happens to fit this other piece perfectly which finishes off the framing of this soffit. Part of the preparation of this doorway overhang was installing some electric conduit so it's ready for the electrician to connect our lighting and exhaust fan power. The finished dark room has marine ply ceiling as part of the system to keep light out. So I'll be constructing a frame to support these marine ply panels. It's made up of lengths of timber secured into the top of the walls that support other pieces of timber that span the ceiling. With the first piece attached to the large heavy roof rafter set on its side, we 
work our way around the perimeter of the ceiling. I've attached a temporary block to this first piece to work as a ledger to help me get a tight measurement for the next piece we're gonna to join to it. To get a really accurate fit, I rough cut the piece slightly oversize, put it in place and scribe the mark for the next cut, trim it off and return it to check its fit. Besides being a frame for our ceiling, these pieces of timber also help reinforce our marine ply panels. The combination of the skirting boards and the ceiling beams helps secure the top and bottom of our panels into our heavy framing material. I've added a couple of small blocks to help wrap around this corner that's created by the existing steel beam of the awning. This will help maintain our ceiling plane around this junction point. I add another temporary block to help me keep the next piece in alignment and continue the process around the whole perimeter of our shed. designed to accommodate a couple of things. It needs to match the height of the photographic chemicals table and be strong enough to hold up the heavy and larger and other photographic developing equipment. Because this room is also used as a storage area, the bench needs to accommodate plastic storage tubs. I'll counterlever the bench off the wall to allow easy access for storage underneath. I'm keeping our two main photographic elements on hand so I can design this bench around them. I established the height of our bench by referencing the photographic chemical bath. After getting a measurement, I cut a piece of scrap plywood to mark out the height and perimeter of our bench. I'll be constructing the bench frame the same way I did the ceiling, just lower down the wall. So me stress, show no panic, I'm just bumped in a dress, and I know that I'm older, I'm done, I do what I want, I do what I want, spend this money at the gym, trying to fit in, cutting the days until I meet my future husband, I try to be kind to myself, but I said, girl, you got this. Attaching a piece of timber underneath the piece that spans across the room. This is to create the counter lever for extending the bench up to the edge of the chemical table. With the main support beam secured in place, I finish off the edges next to the chemical table and move on to framing out the other side of the bench. I get a measure. 
measurement to cut down the plywood sheet we're going to be using for the top of this bench. Because we're constructing a wraparound bench design, I thought it was easier to just bring the plywood in and scribe the cutout instead of doing a whole lot of mathematics. I'm using the jigsaw to cut this so I could have curved inside corners. I check it for fit and then fix it in place with countersunk screws so it can be flat on the top of the plywood. Nine to five was my dad's advice. Don't think tight, I want the luxury life. My beauty can do what I'll do. I'll take what I want. Oh yeah. A whole lot of ticking. Not in our time. when it's closed for the darkroom work and we're adding a latch so it can be locked for security. Today we'll be installing the jam it's going to fit into. I measure the inside dimensions of our doorway. This frame will be covering all four sides of the door jam. I'm using treated structural framing timber with a dimension of 45 by 90. I stained it ahead of time when I was staining our panels. Once I've cut the pieces to size, I check them for fit. I always want a relatively snug, tight fit. I'm applying a liberal amount of liquid nails as we're attaching to a rough sawn piece of timber. I don't want any moisture or light leaking through this jam. There's things in life you simply need to know Like sun and rain and trust in letting go It takes a bit of suffering Sleepless nights and wandering Before you make it safely to the end The end, the end And if you ever wonder There is nothing wrong with a little thunder there's things in life you simply need to know But sun and rain and trust in letting go It takes a bit of suffering and sleepless nights and wandering Before you make it safely to the end mm -hmm. Before you make it safely to the end The bottom piece of door jam overlaps the concrete slab into the rough timber frame and is designed to be set on a five degree angle. This is to help rain and water run outside the shed and completes the engineering for the void we created when we poured the concrete slab. I'm now going to be installing the first plywood panel onto the frame we constructed earlier, but first I'm going to have to cut it to size. This is an awkward piece of material to install. I've attached temporary wooden blocks on the side of the walls to help hold it in place whilst I check it for size. I want to make sure the perimeter of the ceiling panel fits flush and plumb to all three sides of the walls. I realize I've left one notch out for our electric conduit. So after clearly marking this with my pencil, I have to remove the panel, make the adjustment and return the panel in place for one final check. 
With the plywood panel fitting properly, I secure it in place with brass countersunk Phillips head screws. I secure it around the perimeter of the panel first before moving my way into the middle. Join me in the next episode as we complete the ceiling, install the window, build a custom door, and finish off many other details for our darkroom storage shed.